Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and today is Vlogmas Day 9. Now I know my days got a little messed up there, but I'm hoping that I can be back on track now. So I thank you for giving me some grace with not having a video every day. I think I've missed two days so far. Um, but anyways, today we are going to be doing an applique on a sweater. So I'm going to show you how to applique on the EM1010 from Ricoma. I have my design printed out right here. Um, and so this design takes two different fabrics. So I have this really cute cheetah print fabric. This was just a fat quarter from Walmart, I think. Um, and then this was a fat quarter from Joann's. It's a really pretty glitter white. So I think they're really gonna look cute with this design. I have this black sweater from Walmart. This was very inexpensive. I think it was seven bucks. Um, it's the Athletic Works brand. Um, so this is what we're going to be stitching on today. So I have my sweater. I have my fabrics. You're going to need heat and bond to apply to the back of your fabric. And you're going to need uh, embroidery applique scissors. Now I like to use curved applique scissors or curved embroidery scissors because it reduces your risk a little bit of stitching through your garment. Ask me how I know. Um, so I do, I like the curved ones better to help prevent that a little bit. You're also going to need a stabilizer. Now today I'm going to be using this poly mesh stabilizer that I got on Amazon. I actually really like it. This is what I've been using for the big order of Home Means Nevada crewnecks. If you guys have seen my last video on that one, this is what I use for that. And I have one of those sweaters myself that I've washed probably 10 times by now and it's still going strong. My stitches still look great and it's really, really soft. And um, I usually just wear tank tops under my crew necks, even if it's really cold outside, I don't wear like a full shirt and I can't feel anything. Nothing irritates my chest or anything like that. I actually really like this stabilizer. So I will link down below the exact stabilizer that I'm using today. Um, I have my run sheet that's gonna tell me what stops to put in and where. And I have fabric scissors to be able to apply my heat and bond and everything. And then of course I have my heat press over here to apply the heat and bond. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do is prepare all of our fabrics before we go over to the machine. Um, so for the lightning bolt, this is the exact size. My printout is the exact size of my design. So I don't need much as far as fabric goes. So I'm just gonna kinda lay it on top, see how much I need and then cut off a little rectangle and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the fabric that my letters are going on um, let's see basically just gonna cut off this whole section right here so as you can see these pieces are pretty wrinkly so I'm going to iron these out on my heat press before I do my heat and bond and now I'm gonna have these upside down and I'm basically just going to size out my heat and bond for the back of my fabric. Just lay it on top and then cut it to size so that it's not hanging over so you don't get any of that adhesive on your press. So like that, you can see it's just a little bit smaller than my piece of fabric. Okay, perfect, so now this one is just a little bit smaller than my fabric too. So you can see on your heat and bond, there's two sides. There's like a smooth paper side and then a rough side. The rough side is the side that your adhesive is on. So that side is gonna go on your fabric, on the wrong side of your fabric. So you can see I have the right side of my fabric and then I have the papery side on the other side. So the wrong side of the fabric and the adhesive rough side of the heat and bond are touching. So I'm gonna hold this in place and then go press it for the recommended time on your heat and bond. So make sure you check that before you heat press. And I'm gonna let this cool for a minute before I peel it. So I'm gonna go press this one. Okay, so now we can go ahead and peel our heat and bond light. And hopefully you can see it leaves a nice shiny film on our fabric. Go ahead and peel this one too. And this is going to keep the fabric from fraying after you have cut the excess fabric off after the applique. That's really gonna help, especially on designs like today where it doesn't have a satin outline, it has a zigzag stitch outline. It's really gonna help keep your fabric from fraying and coming loose under the threads and things like that. So you're definitely gonna need heat bond light. 
So now I have my two fabrics ready to go. Super cute, this white cheetah print is absolutely adorable. So I'm gonna cut off a piece of stabilizer and then we're going to take our sweater. Now you don't have to do it this way, this is just how I like to do it. I find it easier to hoop this way. So you're gonna put it inside out. You don't necessarily have to bring the arms out. And on the front of the sweater, you're gonna make sure it's as flat as possible. We're going to use spray adhesive to keep this in place while we hoop. So now I'm gonna spray the stabilizer. And then put it upside down and put it on. And sometimes if you get a wrinkle, you can straighten it out and respray that area and then flip it back right side out. And now we're ready to place our design on top and then line up our hoop. So to keep this in place, you can either use packing tape or you could use pins, whichever one you want. I'm gonna use packing tape today just because it's a little bit easier. You have less risk of pinning the other side of it, you know, pinning all the way through. So I'm just gonna line it up right where I think it should be. And then I like to go four fingers down from the collar. Um, that's just my personal preference. So I'm just gonna make sure, just line it up. That's good. And then I'm gonna take my tape measure and see if it's even from the center. So that's 10 inches from the armpit seam and 10 inches from the armpit seam, perfect. So, actually I just bumped that, there we go. So now I'm gonna take just a small piece of packing tape and tape it in place. And this is just gonna hold it while I slide the bottom part of the hoop underneath. So using our eight by 12 hoop today that came with our Recoma, I'm gonna slide the bottom part underneath, straighten it out. Oops, there's another tag in there, I didn't even see that. That looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna line up the top and I'm gonna make sure that the line, the, uh, the lines that they give you to show you where center is, line up with the center of my design. I can see that the lines, the vertical lines on my design are lined up with the vertical lines on the hoop. So I'm pretty happy with that placement, but things can change as you actually press it in. It could be a little crooked. So we are going to play with it and see what happens. You can always rehoop it and always adjust. So that actually moved over to the left a little bit. So I'm going to pop the top out and very carefully move it over and see if that helps. Okay, much better. That's still lined up center. Make sure the hoop's all the way in. And that looks pretty darn perfect to me. I'm not going to pull it underneath too much. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and get it on the machine. Okay, and I already made sure my bobbin is full. Okay, perfect. Make sure it's under the sewing arm and everything is clear. Now I'm going to use white as my thread for all of it. So let me show you how to put in the stops. Okay, so this is the so this is the run sheet that came with the design. It's six steps, and uh, just for my own memory, um, I write down what each step is just because I forget very fast. So I know step one is the mama placement stitch. Step two is the mama tap down stitch after I place my fabric. And then after that, I'll cut the fabric. And then step three is the lightning bolt placement. Step four is the lightning bolt tap down and then I'll cut it. And then step five and six is the zigzag stitch for the completed stitches. So I like to write it down. You don't have to do whatever works for you. Um, but I like to write down what each one is instead of just what color. Um, so that's just what I do. 
so let's go over here. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to the thread colors. Now my white is on needle number 10. And I know from my tap down stitch that the first four stitches, I need to stop after every single one of them. Um, I need to stop after the first placement stitch to lay down my fabric. I need to stop after the second one to cut my fabric. I need to stop after the third one to lay down the fabric for the lightning bolt. And then I need to stop after the fourth step to cut the fabric on the lightning bolt. So that's what this button right here is. It's called a frame out button. So I'm gonna hit 10 because my white is on needle number 10 and then I'm gonna hit frame out and it's gonna put an F right next to it. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the next four step or for the first four steps and then 10, 10. So it'll stop after number four, but then these ones, since it doesn't have frame out and I'm on automatic, it's just gonna keep going. So I have noticed that on the mighty hoop, I can't use the frame out, especially if I'm on other it makes a really weird grinding noise, but since we're using the hoop that came with it and on a set frame, it, it's going to be fine. So my stops are all set. Um, I'm going to do a trace first before we start and then lock it in place and then go. Okay, perfect. I'm really happy with that placement. So I'm going to take off my my uh, paper and I'm going to hit start and we'll place our first fabric after it stitches. Okay, so you can see how the frame came out. Now I'm going to lay my fabric on top, making sure it's covering all of the stitches. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit start again and it's gonna go back. And now it's gonna do our tap down stitch to keep this fabric in place and then we can cut. Okay, so that just finished and now you can either cut out your fabric while it's on here. I'm gonna take it to my table. I like to take it to my table just because this table is adjustable in its height and I like to stand up while I'm working. So that's why I like to bring it over here and I think it puts less stress on your bracket arms, just my personal opinion. So I'm going to cut around the outline so the thread is in white, so hopefully you can see that on the camera. I know my corner over here is a little dark. Um, so I'm going to cut just outside of the stitches, being very careful to not cut the stitches. Now this is where I said having curved scissors really helps because it keeps you from cutting through the shirt, or it helps anyways. Um, big scraps like this all save and you can see it still has the heat and bond on the back so that's a great applique piece so definitely save your scraps Now this is where that heat and bond light comes in really handy the the heat and bond light is what's going to keep your fabric from fraying where you cut. So now as you wash your sweater, um, you're not gonna have frayed fabric underneath after the wash process and, and it being cut. It's going to continue to be a nice, sturdy piece of fabric under the stitches. Now for this part in the middle, you can either go in with an X-Acto knife after your fabric is already stitched. And to, if you're gonna do it after, you have to be very, very careful, obviously, so that you don't go all the way through. 
and get the other side of your shirt. So what you can do is you can just go almost flat and just slide in just a tiny bit, just enough to get your scissors through. And if you go flat, I can almost guarantee you, you will not go through your sweater. If you dig at it, you will probably go through your sweater. I have gotten really good to knowing where to stop. So it takes practice. Um, so to start with, I would recommend doing it beforehand after you line up your fabric, taking like a pencil or something and marking where the hole is and then making your slit and then laying your fabric on top. Um, so that part is completely up to you, whether you wanna do that before or after. I hope that makes sense. So you can see we have our letters all cut out. So now we're going to put it back onto the machine and do the placement stitch for our lightning bolt and then cut that out too. Okay, so the middle lightning bolt is done. It's looking adorable. So now it's just going to do the final zigzag stitch on both pieces. So it's all done, stitched beautifully, absolutely perfect. I love that zigzag stitch. So now we're going to take our hoop off. Now before I finally reveal the whole thing, we're going to cut off our stabilizer. So I'm just going to loosen up the sides up until the stitching. and then cut away as much excess as possible, but still giving, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch or so away from the stitches. You don't wanna cut it too close, but you don't wanna leave a whole bunch either, so. So here's how much I cut off. If I was giving this to an actual customer, I'd clean it up a little bit more, but it's just for me, so I don't really care. So let's turn it right side out and take a look. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So there is how it turned out. Let's go ahead and try it on. Okay, so here's how it looks on. I think it's perfect. I think the placement is perfect. Right where you want it on a sweater. So cute. I probably could have gone two layers of the white glitter fabric um, because it is a little bit darker. So I, I could have probably gone to, or at least done like a white underneath because you you can see the black sweater underneath it a little bit, but I still think it looks really cute. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed Vlogmas Day 9. I will see you tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 10.